Now here we introduce you the concept of the strain energy. That is the energy is a form of a potential energy that is stored within a material when it is subjected to deformation or strain. It is the energy that is required to deform a material from its original shape to the new shape under the external load. And it is stored in the material as a result of internal work done by the stress age generated within the material. That type of energy is called as the strain energy. To understand the concept of the strain energy, we will consider here a bar BC of length equal to L and it has a uniform cross section area. Let us assume here the uniform cross section area is equal to a circular area is equal to A. This rod is attached at B to a fixed support and subjected at C to a slowly increasing load that is called as gradually applied load and this load is the axial load is passing through the centroid of the given cross section. Initially the load is zero, when the load is zero then we have deformation is also equal to zero. As the load will increase gradually, you will find here there is a linear increase in the deformation up to elastic limit. So you will get initially a straight line behavior between the load and the deformation. After the yield point, if we draw the curve of the load versus deformation, we will get a non-linear behavior which is shown like this. So this diagram represents here the load deformation for the rod BC. Area under the P versus X diagram here represents the work done. So if you have a deformation up to X1, then this area here represents the work done due to the load P. So this area here is called as the strain energy and the strain energy here is represented by letter U. So U is the strain energy is nothing but the area under the load versus deformation diagram. Consider here that we have elementary work is represented by this vertical strip for which the load P is remain constant. So let us consider here the work done du by the load P as the rod elongated by small amount by dx. Originally it is elongated x and it is further elongated by distance dx. For this small rectangle here, we have load acting is equal to P. So we can calculate the elemental area here. If we calculate this elemental area, then we can calculate here the total work done by integrating it from 0 to x1. So we have elementary work du is same as equal to the area that equal to P and it has a deformation equal to dx. And if you integrate here this elementary work, then you can calculate here the U that is the strain energy or the total work done. So total work done can be obtained by integrating du. So we have total work done is same as equal to total strain energy is nothing but the integral. We have lower limit equal to zero upper limit is equal to x1 p multiplied by dx. So in this case the work done by the load p as it is applied gradually that is slowly to a rod must result in an increase in the sum amount of energy associated with the deformation and this energy is called as the strain energy. So total work done here is same as the total strain energy. So in the case of actually loaded member, we can calculate the total work done and this total work done hereafter is called as a total strain energy and you can calculate this as integral 0 to x1 p into dx. So in this figure from O to D, we have linear variation of a force with respect to x. So we can very well calculate here the strain energy up to O to D that is up to elastic limit. So in this case, we can divide this diagram into two parts. One part is OD, which one is a linear elastic deformation and D to E is a nonlinear elastic deformation. First, we consider here the work done due to linear elastic deformation. In this case, the force P is directly proportional to X and is given as P is equal to K multiplied by X. So anytime if we have a force is equal to P1, then we have corresponding deformation will be equal to x1. In that case, this area will be representing here the total work done, which is hereafter is also called as the strain energy. And this area will be equal to 1 by 2 of p1 multiplied by x1. 
So in general, in the linear elastic deformation, the portion of a load diagram that is from O to D, we can represent here the P in the form of straight line equation and we can give the value of P as K multiplied by X. So if I substitute this equation back into equation one, I can find out here the total synergy and we can get the value of u equal to integral 0 to x1. So here p is replaced as k into x multiplied by dx. k is the constant term here, can be taken outside. Integral of x dx will be x square by 2. So we have total synergy is same as equal to 1 by 2 k multiplied by x1 whole square but here the value of p1 is same as equal to k multiplied by x1 so one of the x will be adjusted here and we can write the final equation as 1 by 2 into p into x1 that is the same hatch area here represents the strain energy up to the deformation x1 so we'll divide the strain energy on both sides by volume and volume here is same as the cross section area a multiplied by length L. So let divide here both side by volume. In that case, we will get U divided by the volume V and the volume V is same as area multiplied by length. So we have U by V is same as equal to integral P multiplied by DX divided by area divided by length L from limit 0 to X1. So in this case, the volume of the rod V is a product of the cross section area multiplied by length L. So this term here is called as the strain energy density. That is the strain energy per unit volume. So strain energy per unit volume is also called as the strain energy density. And it is represented by letter lower case U. So total energy divided by volume is strain energy density U is same as the total energy divided by volume is equal to integral P divided by A. P divided by A is nothing but a normal stress multiplied by dx divided by L. And we have limit is from 0 to x1. Let here normal stress is represented by sigma x and is same as the normal force P divided by area A. So this term we can replace as P by A. Similarly, we can define the normal strain epsilon x is a change in length is x divided by L, where L is the original length. So the given equation of a strain energy density, u we can write as equal to integral. Here p by a is replaced as same as sigma x. dx by L, so we have dx by L is same as d epsilon x. And this time the limit is zero. Since we are integrating with respect to epsilon x, we have upper limit equal to epsilon one, where epsilon one is a corresponding strain to the elongation x1. So total strain energy you can calculate as integral zero to x1 using the load diagram, that is integral of p dx, and the strain energy we can calculate on the basis of the product of stress and the strain. As far as the unit is considered, we have strain energy density is strain energy as unit of joules and the volume as unit of meter cube. So we can express it as joules per meter cube or you can express in multiples as kilojoules per meter cube or megajoules per meter cube. If the material is loaded up to the elastic limit that equal to point D in a stress versus strain diagram then this one is representing the loading and we can attain the maximum value equal to D and if we do the unload then we will come back to the original point. So initially for loading here we attain the value equal to epsilon 1 and when we do the unloading in that case we will return back to the original value. So this time here the area under this diagram is representing the strain energy per unit volume that is called as strain energy density. So anywhere you consider a stress equal to sigma 1 corresponding will be the strain equal to epsilon. So this area represents here the strain energy per unit volume equal to u. 
but up to the elastic point here we are loading and unloading so we'll come back to the same position o so if you are working in the elastic region there is a hundred percent recovery of the energy stored in the element but if we stress it beyond the elastic limit so let load element and the loading is done in this direction and we'll cross the elastic limit let we cross here and we'll come to this point here so at the corresponding point here we have a strain is equal to epsilon 1 but if we try to unload beyond the elastic limit unloading will be done by this line and we can't recover the entire strain even the stress is become zero we have permanent stress is produced equal to epsilon p so epsilon p represents here the permanent deformation and epsilon p to epsilon 1 we have elastic recovery so if you load it beyond the elastic limit and if the material is unloaded the stress will return to zero but there is a permanent deformation which is represented by the strain epsilon p so only the portion of strain energy per unit volume corresponding to this triangular area is recovered not 100 percent is recovered only this much which one is the elastic recovery will be recovered and the remainder of the energy spent in deforming the material is dissipated in the form of heat similar to this we have one more term is called as the modulus of toughness so if we load the element up to the rupture so corresponding strain produced here is a rupture strain, which is represented by epsilon r so this total area here is called as the modulus of toughness and the strain energy is strictly defined for the elastic limit that is up to the point D whereas the entire area up to the rupture in a stress strain diagram is called as the modulus of toughness so this one is representing the modulus of toughness so the modulus of toughness represents here the energy per unit volume required to cause the material to rupture and it is clear from the toughness of a material that it is related to its ductility so this one is representing the ductility as well as the ultimate strength of the material so the modulus of toughness of the material is equal to the area under the entire stress strain diagram and it represents the energy per unit volume required to cause the material to rupture and the capacity of a structure to impact load depends upon the toughness so there is a slight difference between the strain energy per unit volume and the modulus of toughness strain energy per unit volume that is the strain energy density is the area under the stress strain diagram maximum value is up to the elastic limit but if you consider the entire area then we can define the modulus of toughness represents here the capacity of a structure to impact load so the strain energy per unit volume is called as the strain energy density is given as integral of sigma x into d epsilon x from limit 0 to epsilon 1 if the value of the sigma x is well within the elastic limit that is the value of sigma x is less than equal to s y t in that case we can very well apply the Hooke's law we are only discussing up to the point d where we are the stress is equals corresponds to s y t so below this region we can apply the Hooke's law and according to the Hooke's law, the stress sigma x is same as equal to the Eng modulus multiplied by linear strain that equal to epsilon x. So in this case, we can replace sigma x as E epsilon x. So we have strain energy U is given as integral 0 to epsilon 1. Sigma x is replaced as Eng modulus E which is remained to be constant into epsilon x multiplied by d epsilon x Eng modulus is constant can be taken outside so we have e integral of epsilon x d epsilon x is same as epsilon x square divided by 2 upper limit is 1 so we have epsilon 1 square divided by 2 in this case we can replace here epsilon 1 epsilon 1 will be same as equal to sigma 1 divided by the Eng modulus e1 so again we can put here epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 by e1 in that case we can rewrite the equation of strain energy point volume as e 
epsilon 1 square is same as sigma 1 square divided by 2 times of ang modulus square. So finally we are getting the alternate expression for strain energy u that will be equal to 1 by 2 into sigma 1 square and divided by ang modulus e. So this one is the expression for the strain energy in the terms of stress. If we set the value of sigma 1 corresponds to SYT that is the ill strength then the area under the stress strain diagram represents here the maximum value of the strain energy per unit volume which it can be stored and this maximum value of the strain energy per unit volume is based on the value of SYT. So this strain energy hereafter will be called as the modulus of resilience. Modulus of resilience is nothing but we have a strain energy per unit volume corresponds to the ill strength and is given as instead of sigma 1 you have to use SYT and we have to make a square of it divided by 2 times of ang modulus. The modulus of resilience here is equal to the area under the straight line portion from O to D of the stress strain diagram. We have a straight line relationship up to the yield strength that is the O to D and area under this diagram is representing the modulus of resilience. If we increase the stress then we will go beyond the yield strength and there is a permanent deformation. So the area corresponds to the point D that is up to SYT that represents the modulus of resilience and it represents the energy per unit volume that material can absorb without yielding. So maximum limit is yielding point that equal to SYT. So the capacity of the structure to withstand and impact load without yielding entirely depends upon the resilience of a material. So the modulus of resilience is a useful parameter for comparing the toughness of a different material as it indicates the ability of a material to absorb the energy without undergoing a permanent deformation or failure. Materials with a high modulus of resilience are capable to withstand large amount of deformation without breaking or without cracking. And one last time we introduce is the proof resilience is almost same as the modulus of resilience. Proof resilience is a measure of the amount of energy that material can absorb without undergoing a permanent deformation. It is defined as the maximum amount of energy that can be absorbed by material during the elastic deformation per unit volume up to the yield point. So in the first introduction lecture we have introduced you. The strain energy is same as equal to work done can be obtained as integrating the product of force multiplied by deformation and you have to integrate it from the given limit from 0 to x. Then we introduce the one more term that is called as the strain energy per unit volume which is also called as the strain energy density. The area under the stress strain diagram up to the rupture point is called as modulus of toughness and the area under the stress strain diagram up to the yield strength it is called as the modulus of resilience is also called as the proof resilience. The strain energy in can be calculated as u is equal to 1 by 2 into sigma 1 square divided by ang modulus. So we'll use this formula continuously. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we'll cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here.